Hi folks, this is Dr. Joseph Sarkissian. In this video, I am presenting the surgical placement and restoration of a tissue level Z Systems metal free implant. These implants are made of zirconium dioxide or zirconia and they are completely metal free. Our fine patient is a massage therapist who flew in to receive this implant. The tooth in question is number 19 or number 36. And it appears that after the extraction, the site did not heal very well. And there is a significant amount of uh, scar tissue or probably some granulation, which has to be cleaned up thoroughly before the implant is attempted to be placed. Here we are ready to draw some blood and to obtain PRF, which will be placed alongside the implant due to the peripheral bone defects. During the surgery and after the flaps are laid, we make sure that all the scar tissue and granulation left after the previous extraction are removed. We then use a zirconia burr to see if we can create an osteotomy, which will allow us to place a 12 millimeter zirconia implant and still have primary stability despite the bone defect. We were successful in placing this implant, however, we have to place it slightly deeper to compensate for the buccal bone plate which is missing and which will also be augmented with PRF. Because of the coronal aspect of the bone missing, we have to rely on a slightly higher torque setting to be able to use the apical aspect of the implant for stability. If I'm not able to insert the implant deep enough, I can unscrew it a few turns and then screw it back in. That allows the bone to stretch and allow the implant to be placed slightly deeper at a desired higher torque as mentioned before. A thick membrane of PRF is placed on the buccal aspect of the implant just uh, to augment that part of the missing cortex, but also to thicken the uh, keratinized gingiva. There are three factors here that facilitate bone formation in the defects around the implant. One, zirconia in itself is a biomaterial and will induce bone growth much better than titanium does. Second, if that bone defect has enough bony walls surrounding it, it will definitely form new bone. Third, the PRF will definitely induce not only more bone in the defects, but also thicker gingiva. The patient went home with instructions to wear a protective Essex appliance and comes back five months later. And sure enough, we have ample bone growth and the implant is very stable to be restored. The soft tissue healing around these zirconia implants is just spectacular. There is absolutely no reaction of the soft tissues and the gums and no foreign material reaction. The water laze is used to sculpt the gums and expose the margins completely before the healing screw is removed and the implant is tested for stability. With the water lays, not only is the implant exposed, but also the adjacent emergence pattern of the future crown is carefully sculpted. This is one major benefit of owning the water lays, because if we're doing same day fabrication of crowns, we want the crown to fit exactly 
in the same pattern of gum tissue that we created. And the crown itself becomes the healing abutment, in a sense. As we see in this picture, the gums are beautifully sculpted with absolutely no trauma or burning from the laser. The next thing we do is we test the implant by torquing it at a low setting of 20 newton centimeter. If the implant rotates or creates pain, then we know that it has failed. In this case, because of the position of the implant, we chose an angled abutment, which is held in place with a ceramic screw. So all these components are metal free, and there is a specific driver that will torque the screw into the implant, and which, whenever it reaches the required torque, will either bend or break. You can see how it's bent here, and I do not exceed that force. To close the access hole, we use a material called Clip from Voco. It's a rubbery material, which is easy to remove if needed. Because of the conical connection of the abutment, it is absolutely normal to have a gap between the abutment and the main platform. Both the abutment and the platform of the implant can be prepped with a fine red striped diamond burr. A digital impression is taken with the CEREC. The crown is designed according to the normal CEREC parameters. Note that the emergence pattern is nicely sculpted using the water lays and we just have to make sure that the crown is adapting to that contour with enough room to floss underneath. Here we can see how a small bevel has been introduced on the facial aspect of the platform of the uh, implant. And the two reasons for this is to introduce an anti-rotation aspect for the crown. And secondly, to just cosmetically have the crown margin follow the gum contour. In designing crowns over implants, it is absolutely essential to avoid excessive occlusal forces on the crown, particularly when these are off-center. As we see in this crown, the mesial extent is a little bit too far cantilevered. Therefore, we make sure that we remove all the contacts on top of this occlusal Normal. aspect of the crown.
the cement applied within the crown should be the bare minimum. And then the cleanup process has to be very thorough, but we have to make sure that the crown is held down while uh, the flossing is completed and um, the excess cement is wiped away. We then take an x-ray to confirm the seat and the uh, cement rests are removed if they are detected around the margins.